G'day folks. I had a bit of a break from YouTube, but I thought I'd just bring you a little bit of a clip catching up on what we've been up to. So it's feeding time at the zoo. Uh, Jade Perch, a little bit skeptical about taking straight from the fingers. But um, yeah, they're feeding okay. They're going through around about a um, cup's worth of the pellets at a time. Um, we've got these little uh, six mil pellets. So about a quarter of an inch-ish in size. Normally if you just drop one or two in and they're really hungry, they'll come up and have a nibble on your fingers as well. But yeah, I'll leave the anchor to that. A bit of a quick look at the aquaponics and we'll take a bit of a march down the back. Um, pulled out a load of the parsley here and harvested some up um, for some chimichurri sauce. The chimichurri sauce is, I think it's an Argentinian um, meat marinade or just a sauce that we've been putting over the top. Really nice, just garlic, a couple of herbs and bits and pieces. And in their place, I've um, planted out some white stem pak choy and something else. I'm sorry, Mark, I forgot. A mate gave me the seedlings. Thank you very much. He's been starting them off for me. So two different types of the pak choy. Uh, one's a larger one and one's a smaller one. A couple of little beetroots down in there as well. And they've taken off rather well. Um, some mizuna that was supposed to go out uh, the other day, but I've been working on setting up another bed um, when I haven't been made up with a bit of a cold and uh, sinus infection um, so they haven't gone out yet and neither have these um, yeah very leggy uh, bok choy that was supposed to go out ages ago as well uh, so what i'm trying to do is um, just set up another bed over there give you a bit of a closer look so just behind the dog that's having a bit of a snooze in the rain we have another uh, bed that i'll be setting up here a uh, main reason i'm setting up another bed for the aquaponic system is we've just got really high nitrates and the fish are only half grown at the moment and there will be a load more nitrates coming so hopefully with another bed we'll be able to um, make a bit of a dent in that i'm also changing out um, what sort of crops i'll be growing a lot more of those fast turnover crops like the asian greens as you can see we've got some very nice vienna kohlrabi in here um, whopping one over the other side that needs to come out we'll probably turn that into a bit of a coleslaw um, so yeah, as for the new bed, what we're going to have is a flood and drain and it will be emptying into a little satellite sump. Um, just a little, about a 50, whoops, forgot I had a level on there, about a 50 uh, litre or 60 litre tote. And from there, I'll just be having it run straight over into that sump there. And that will take um, all the flow from this flood and drain bed here. So I'm just going to um, set up a little solids lifting outlet. The idea is um, fresh water in on the top have the water cycle out being drawn from the bottom up through the side in an inch and a half or um, 40 mil outlet over to the sump and that should be able to handle the flow no problem whatsoever so that's what i've had plans uh, planned but like i said being a bit crook and when you've got a sinus infection with the migraines associated uh, your head's a bit fuzzy so i didn't want to cut or drill any holes with that uh, what i've been doing is a lot of manual work i'll give you a bit of a gander so you folks might remember the mulch that I picked up back in May uh, to spread around the garden down the back. Well, I finally got around to do that. And thank you again, Stephen and family, for allowing us to collect that mulch. And they actually dropped off another trailer load as well that I'll just be using to uh, mulch down this little pathway. Um, but as you can see, it's made a nice covering over the ground. Um, in some places, it's around about um, four inches or 100 mil thick. In others, it's around eight inches or 200 mil thick. And I've just gone around plants like these Queensland arrowroot we want to keep and also bits and pieces like this um, volunteer Thai basil that looks to be um, surviving okay through winter here. And we've mulched up around the trees and pretty much all around all the garden beds down the back. I've also used some um, bits and pieces that um, the neighbours cut off. Uh, they were just cutting some trees back, mulch that off. Oh, mulch that up, sorry. My head's not too clear and popped it in spots and I've got some more little spots down the back I need to mulch up as well. But yeah, it's, um, it's done a nice job of tidying the place up. Uh, the main purpose of having it here is just to um, smother any weed grasses or bits and pieces that come through. Another thing it's doing, I'll just come back up here and show you, is hopefully it's going to stop any erosion. Now, we don't have a lot of rain coming through at the moment, but we have a little bit of a trickle coming down. Uh, from the driveway so hopefully this mulch will um, slow the water and help it to soak in rather than running through the property um, we actually had a bit of a gully running through here 
and into Pauline's place. Um, last time it rained, but yeah, I think this wood chip will do a good job at slowing that down. Another thing um, the wood chips will be doing is as they break down, um, they will be feeding up the soil itself, uh, giving nutrients to the, um, the, the biota in there, the fungi, the bacteria and that sort of thing. So yeah, this soil has been pretty degraded. I mean, I am going to keep growing in my self-watering wicking beds just because they've always done so well for us in the past. They conserve a lot of water and they're also elevated so it makes it easier for us to work on. But yeah, um, uh, nothing wrong with feeding up the soil so when we plant in trees and bushes later on, they're nice and healthy. Uh, the gardens themselves are doing really well, can't complain at all. I think last time I um, did a clip I just popped some of these um, ornamentals and cauliflowers and red shallots out. The cauliflowers are doing really well. Uh, we had some carrots pop in that barrel over there, then they got eaten. Um, but the other ones I sowed out over here. As you can see, we've got a bit of a line coming through there. They're doing okay. Once they get about double that height, I'll sow another row in front of them as well. Um, yeah, so pretty happy with the way things are gone. Um, as I mentioned, we do have some mulch from next door, some trees next door that I've put down. And I have this little patch down the back here that I need to mulch up as well. That's just underneath our blueberries. And as you can see, blueberries have got loads of fruit on and loads of blooms on there as well. Uh, they'll need to be protected from the local birds soon, so I'll have to um, yeah, put some sort of a cover over the top, stop them getting in there and having a feast. Um, but yeah, I need to um, pop some mulch down here, probably use some of the Chinese celtus um, that are growing on the uh, fence line to begin with, and then just top it off with this other mulch that we got from Stephen and family. I've also got a few bits and pieces too, like the... Um, pigeon pea that was growing over the fence and hitting Pauline in the head as she was um, leaving for work in the morning so that'll get mulched up as well and here I have where the majority of the um, the trees that were growing on the fence line have ended up You'll probably see a little bit of steam coming off there there was a lot more steam coming off there earlier this morning when it was a bit cooler and just to give you a bit of an idea on the temperature I only finished this off um, probably around about 48 hours ago and just at the top here, the top, what is about 20 centimetres, 8 inches, we are sitting at, uh, we've gone over 60, we've gone over 65, see if I can get a better shot for you. We've gone over 65, we're over 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, this compost is cooking down nicely. Uh, what it is, is a mix of um, different weed trees we have, the Chinese Celtus or Chinese Elm. Um, I've done a layer of them, and then over the top of that, I've mulched down some um, bits and pieces I've been saving, just tufty grass, and old Queensland arrowroot leaves, things like that, a little bit of brown matter, popped a layer of that in. Then over the top of that, I've added some Rob Special Sauce, then a layer of horse manure, and then some more green tree mulch and just built it up that way. Uh, if you want a special clip on that, let me know. But yeah, it's a very basic composting method. Um, traditionally, I just leave it sit till it's all broken down. Compost worms move in and make a very lush, rich compost. Uh, this time around though, I am going to be turning it. I just need to move my thermometer from the top here because it's cracked and it'll fill with water. Um, I will be turning it every, probably about once a week or so with a compost screw. And I've also bought some um, chicken, um, sorry, head's a bit funny. What's it called? Manure, that's what it's called. Uh, chicken manure off a side uh, road stall out towards Boona. Um, so I'll be turning this and throwing that in there just to um, fire it up again and get everything breaking down nicely. And most of this material here will be used in these couple of beds here uh, that we need to be reworked. These are the ginger. Um, you can see they're dying back from the last clip just because it's winter. And the turmeric bed. And you can probably tell the soil level in here we get the right angle has fallen quite a bit so a lot of that compost will be used in these beds as I feed them up for um, the, the crops that will be going in here. Uh, this one here will have asparagus and that one over there will have ginger in it again. I don't mind planting ginger where ginger has been previously as long as I feed it up and I know there's no rot in the soil. Oh and we also did uh, pull off some of these um, Coffee berries the other day, we're just using them as a fruit. Um, I don't know if we're going to be saving the um, seeds this time around, but yeah, they're a nice tasty little fruit. So anyway, back to the compost. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm pretty happy with the way that went. It took me a couple of days to do it just because I've been feeling crook, just coming out and mulching a little bit at the time. Um, what else? Oh, veggie pods, give you a gander at them. These guys have been going well. Uh, the broccoli in this bed here, we've been um, just let grow for the heads as they come through. 
that's another side shoot um, and as I've said before in other clips I'll put a link up there that you can click on don't pull your plants after you harvested the main head of your broccoli you'll get all these little side shoots and they'll just keep giving you um, crop after crop uh, even if you're not in it for the heads um, these little leaves here you can slice them up finely stir fry them pop them in soups and that sort of thing very nutritious great for you I do have a little bit of a deficiency in these guys at the moment. I have been treating them with a liquid fertilizer, um, so they are improving slightly. Uh, down here, uh, again, some things I sowed out last clip a couple of weeks back. Three runs of the Moulin Rouge small beetroot and some more of the uh, Chinese red shallots. And again, two rows of the Moulin Rouge and all our brassicas we let go to flower just to help um, encourage some beneficials into the patch. No bees out here today, as you can tell, because it's raining. Uh, but we have had European bees, native bees, um, lacewings and hoverflies on here. So it's good to see those beneficials in the patch. Um, and this bed will pretty much all just be yeah, let go until all these flowers finish. And then I'll clean it out, feed it up and put something else in there. And while we're here, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on the lime tree. Uh, despite what a few people said when I did the um, uh, the pruning clip. I didn't kill my tree. It has survived. It is sending out new shoots and actually if we come around this side here We might even find a flower or two down in there So she is surviving. She is doing okay and just a bit of a heads up why this shade cloth is here um, Citrus trees can be very susceptible to sunburn on the trunk. Can't they Lizzie? Um, so I've just got this shade cloth around the main trunk for the time being. I was going to paint it up with a DIY citrus tree paint, but decided against it, uh, mainly because I think by the time the sun gets too hot and harsh, um, we'll have a nice canopy of green over the top. So just as a bit of a precaution, just around the main um, trunk there, I have some shade cloth for now. And underneath it, I've got my little oregano pouch and some of the Cambodian ginger, which is slowly dying back again uh, due to the cooler weather. You know you can stay under the house, old lady. You don't have to follow me around the patch. So there you go, folks. A bit of a look at what I've been up to. I've been having a bit of a break. I've also been a bit crook, which really sucks when you're having a break. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a catch-up. I will be posting more clips, especially to do with the aquaponics in the next couple of weeks. Um, bringing that bed online and a few other bits and pieces I have in mind. So I will leave it there. Thank you very much to all the supporters who are sticking by us and helping to support the channel. And to all you folks who come back week after week to thumb up the clips and to say good day in the comments down below, I really do appreciate it. Um, getting a bit short of breath, so I might go have a coffee. Look after yourself, folks, and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, all.